I'd like to start with some simple title associations. Just tell me the first word that pops into your head. For example, I might say, never say never again. And you might say, rip off. Dr. No. First. Goldfinger. Classic. Casino Royale. Brilliant. On Her Majesty's Secret Service. Emotional. Goldeneye. Great. Juan Mosales. Baffling. License to Kill. Masterpiece. Die Another Day. Ludicrous. Diamonds Are Forever. Terrible. The Spy Who Loved Me. Epic. No Time to Die. No Time to Die. You don't... No Time to Die. It's ridiculous. That ending, it, it, it eclipsed everything, didn't it? Why on earth did they kill him off? The own people killed him off. The guy only just got over Vesper. He found a new love, only to leave her behind with a child. I mean, a child, John. I mean, I can't deal with this. I mean, that's another thing. How did he get a child in the first place? Did you see the torture scene in Casino Royale? Even possible. And now he's gone. The embodiment of survival. Yeah, right. That was more than one word. Hey guys, this is Jeroen, better known as Dutch Bond fan, and I'm once again rejoined by my biggest inspiration, my fellow uh, YouTuber, John from Haphazard Stuff. How you doing, John? Very good, thank you. I'm excited to be talking about this movie with you, finally. Again, for, for what feels like, you know, the first time finally after seeing this. Yeah, um, so like... This time we're going to actually talk about it, av having seen the stinking thing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> Instead of doing all our predicting and speculating and all that jazz. Exactly. Yeah, we're now doing uh, multiple episodes again, probably another six parters, um, and this is episode one. We're going to be discussing the beginning of No Time to Die. You guys may have seen we did a little six-part series before which was called the uh, forecasting no time to die series in which we did a lot of predicting on no time to die in six parts uh, this time we're going to go back to the predictions and uh, talk a lot more about no time to die after finally seeing it in another six parts coming up and like has been the construction and tradition between me and john the odd numbered episodes go on my channel and you will find the even numbered episodes on his. So, um, before we actually dive into all the stuff of No Time to Die, I just want to hear your initial first impressions uh, after seeing this movie. What did you think, John? Um, I think like uh, when we when we were discussing this movie uh, and predicting and all that stuff, I'd always I had expected that it would be middle of the road. It would be a decent movie. I wouldn't right. like it as much as like you know the, the my favorite Bond movies are. It's not going to be one of the worst ones, and that's pretty much how it fell. For yeah. Me. Um. I the for the the first half of the film, I was enjoying. And then 
towards the middle, it felt very dry. It's a long movie. I don't know it if is, it really yeah. needed to be that long. But I was enjoying it th that first half for the most part. <clears throat> and then that second half, it started to get a little bit too convoluted and confusing to me. Yeah. Uh, a lot of the... Uh, because we know it's like Bond and Madeline and all that stuff. And that did not work for me. And that's kind of the main focus around the story. Yeah. And so like when much. that, when I didn't buy into their little romance and stuff, a lot of the emotional hits that I guess they were expecting to get fell flat for me. I, I didn't really, it didn't really affect me too much. And then like we get to that ending and it it was pretty unsatisfying. Uh, right. Unsatisfying way for him to go out. Um, so, like, I, I would say it's kind of, it's it's sort of a mixed bag. It's not terrible. It's, no. it's But that ending really eclipses a lot of the good stuff that came before. It's like I almost forget about all the good stuff when I think about No Time to Die, and I just keep on going back to that ending. Um, yeah, and I think we we could talk about it more in detail later. But I think they could have come up with a better way, even if they want to kill him, which was we kind of talked about that because yeah, we both our thing was this like, could happen. yeah, like they already exhausted the two extreme endings they could have done with Craig, him yeah. coming back to the service in Skyfall, him leaving the service in Spectre. So they had to find something different and significant enough to end this movie on and one of them was yeah. killing him off which is what they, they can't did. just end the movie like you know the first 20 with him just sleeping yeah. with a girl that's correct fine you know like <laughs> yeah. but, you know. it would be it's, it would feel like a come down like it, it has to be yeah. like this big epic conclusion so yeah that's um, the tradition to these days but I, I think they could have done it in a more satisfying way even if it, even if you want to kill him off, a, a more satisfying and heroic way, where like you know, I would have like you know felt like applauding. And it's like okay, yeah, I could see. Uh, yeah, it, it had to be that way. This the way they did it is just kind of confusing. <laughs> Why no, they no, did I, it that I, way? I agree, and and we'll get into more detail on this when we probably in the final part of of this series when we and, get to uh, the ending. I want to know like what was your overall impressions of it when you were sitting there watching us you know i i can agree to a large part of the ending it's such a polarizing thing i i it even divided me and where do i stand with this it, it really needed to sink the first days after seeing this i agree that it overshadows a lot of the good but i have to say i am pretty positive about this movie a lot of our predictions were were spot on, um, yeah. but also I was happily surprised by by some of it. Uh, mainly, a lot of the action, the cinematography, the music as well, which I really liked. Some some callbacks I didn't expect that I was pleasantly surprised by. Um, I I actually know me. That's another thing. We mm -hmm. really were thinking a lot, like, is he going to be 007? And is this going to be the, the the new jinx that's going to be even more terrible? I wasn't as annoyed by her as I was initially think, thinking it, we would be. You know, I was thinking it's just going to be her one-upping Bond the whole time. And, you know, it's going to be a lot of, you know, everybody was so concerned. It was going to be so woke. Mm -hmm. Which I feel there were moments where, which definitely... Uh, felt like that, but not to my, you know, it didn't go in my annoying so zone as much. I was happy when she reinstated that 007 number for some reason. It's, it sounds childish, but I've, I, I felt kind of relieved by that, and we'll get into all of that stuff later. Yeah. Overall, um, I'm pretty positive about it, uh, but I'm still very divided on the ending, and I'm more, I'm leaning more towards the camp of this is not the ending I wanted, and it's not necessarily something that moved me that much. Um, and I wish that they ended it differently, but the rest, 
there's so much to enjoy in this as well. So I can't wait to dive into more detail uh, about this uh, with you. Go and over all of these. When you went to see it, you went to see it um, with with that Friday night, the 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 first the first night it came out, right? First day, yeah. For, for me, it was a first day. Um, Thursday, the what was it? The the thirty, two weeks ago actually, Thursday. as of, yeah. As of recording then, this, um, did you have to go to the bathroom at any point? You stayed in that seat, right? I stayed in the seat. Yeah, I made sure to go, and sometimes I have a weak bladder. Uh, yeah. Actually, I, I as, as you know, this film was long. I remember I had one large beer, which which the waiter brought, because we had like VIP seats. And in the beginning, I was chucking it away, and I was like, wait a minute, this movie's <laughs> long. I better do it a little bit, a little bit slower, because you know I don't want the bladder to get going. And, I, and we had no break too in this uh, this screening, so it was one sitting, no breaks. So, uh, but I I, that, I had no problems with the bladder, luckily. So that that so, was good. So towards the end, you weren't like you know straining, saying I, I don't want to. I'll just hold it in. Uh, did it you have like, that problem? <laughs> no, ironically, I didn't. I knew uh, I knew it was going to be long, so like I took it easy on the soda, like beforehand yeah. and like during the movie, like I was just sipping it, and. Um, mm -hmm. At the end, when it finished, uh, I know you had to have stayed through all the credits. Yep, I did. I actually, I said to, because Leeward was about to get out, I was like, no, 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 we need to <laughs> main seat. We need to see if the James Bond will return and will be there. I need to know. And I had a hunch that it would be, because I, I think Ugunaga said so in an interview. That it was there. Oh, I was totally expecting it, but uh, there was a fun moment there when it did pop up, because uh, a lot of the people got up and were walking towards my little stand. I had like a private balcony, and they were walking towards the exit. And then at one point, you know, the James Bond will return pops on, and I literally went a little bit exaggerated, but I went like, "Yes, I told you to my girlfriend." <laughs> and and then a guy was walking, and he would like. Oh yeah, how about that? And then he just, <laughs> and he, he didn't care, you know. So he was like, I was, casual, I was like, yeah, and he, you know, there's the, the guy the in a suit, yeah, and I'm in a suit and everything. So uh, yeah, that was fun. Did, did but, you? Um, what was the reaction in in your theater like at the end? Did you notice anything? Like, uh, yeah, a lot of people seemed sad about it, and you could hear some mumbling, you know. Uh, and definitely you could hear the casuals like, oh, I guess that was it then. You know, they, they have no idea about the whole rebooting concept. Yeah. But you could definitely feel it needed to land in, in the audience. I noticed like at the end of my theater, I heard one, one guy uh, say to his like girlfriend or wife or something, see, like they're not going to make any more James Bond movies now. It's just going to be movies about uh, with the black girl. Yeah. Like that's that's, I think, the confusion. Mm -hmm. That like the general audience is 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 gonna have yeah. uh, a lot of this yeah. stuff. Yeah, but no, because that's what they keep reading in the press, so can't blame it. You know, good. Eon's gonna have to do a lot of clearing up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the confusion, like you know, for the next batch of movies. Bond? Yeah. How can yeah. you bring it back? You killed him. Wait, 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 what? Huh? Yeah, yeah. Are they gonna do the same thing as with Kingsman, like the Alpha Gel that brings him back? You, you know the... Maybe they'll just do prequels. Yeah, you know, like it's yeah. gonna be. Oh yeah, yeah. That's another thing they could do. Uh, Let's start talking about the movie from the beginning, the Gun Barrel. Now I heard our Gun Barrels were different. I read it somewhere. We well, the Gun Barrel was the same, but in Europe. Um, the was, universal uh, logo dissolves into the white dots, and mm -hmm. I heard that wasn't the case in the U.S. Screen. No, we so like we got um, the more traditional, like the MGM lion, that cartoon lion that they're using now. It's not even a real lion anymore that they use in those those logos yeah. anymore. No, uh, it's yeah. always a cartoon one looking. Uh, but yeah, it was like the MGM with the lion. You hear the the roar, and that faded out, and that's when we started getting the. Uh, the gun barrel. Yeah, gun. I like that better. That's how it's supposed to be. Did Did you see our version? Of I I did see that 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 universal thing. I I, I wasn't really a fan. <laughs> it's I, kind I of did... neat. Like I see like Universal, like they tried to incorporate their own logo into the the dots. Yeah. But it just seemed kind of awkward. Yeah, Th there was no real point to do that. Um, 
I have to say though, uh, I did like because I was saying to to Lirit, I hope there's a gun barrel because there was. Mm -hmm. I did the, uh, the the video, the significance of the gun barrel. I was pretty sure it was going to start with a gun barrel because I heard the music that you know that that seemed to reek like they're gonna start this off with a gun barrel. But I had like two concerns: is it gonna be Bond walking in there, and is it gonna start with one? Then it did. It was Bond. It was a gun barrel. Now again, we didn't get a traditional one. This was, you know, the, this was like a silvery ice-colored gun barrel. But I was overall pretty excited because the music was good. Craig was in the gun barrel. Those were already won over. Me. But there was no blood, and then it just fades. I far figured, away. like, yeah, you would. And, and and I was like. Again, no. Again, Craig did not get a traditional gun barrel. He never got one, and he's the only guy to have a unique gun barrel for every movie, which none of the other actors had. And yet, they kept making it totally different and never a traditional one. Um, you know, I that, thought that just he opens the iris and stuff. I thought, but he, I was he, excited he, about it. I liked it enough. What about you? I I thought he kind of walked a little fast in that gun barrel. Like it seemed like it went by a little bit faster than normal. Like it didn't. Yeah. I barely even got a chance to like, oh, okay, here's the gun barrel, and it was like over. It seemed like pretty quick. And he didn't do the the you know the sprinting pace that he had in Quantum, where he just you know he almost ran past and shot. Quantum had the really fast one in the ending, if you remember. I guess I guess this one they but must have filmed it pretty. Yeah. This was a new one. This was he filmed this with. This was a new gun barrel he filmed, I'm guessing. This wasn't a reuse. No, from... no and he, this was the first one where he's actually wearing a tuxedo in the gun barrel, too, instead oh, of... Oh, I didn't even... Oh, that didn't register with me. Hmm. Yeah, no, he did. It's a, that hadn't happened since the Brosnan days, I think, that to, to have him in a tuxedo. It's always a suit with a tie. Oh, yeah. Hmm. But, uh... What did you so, think? So, did so, you, so you, you were... notice if really, like, the blood wasn't there and... The, or... Oh yeah, I noticed it. I because even um, I noticed the oh it's it's the, the the like the iris isn't opening up into the scene. I see like like in the 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 old usual ways. It seems like we're zooming into the iris yeah. and like it's kind of dissolving into this snow scene. And Bond so is I, dissolving I, as well, which is also yeah. So very... what would you make of that? He just kind of disappears. Yeah. You, you could watch that symbolically mm -hmm. as like a foreshadowing of what happens in the ending. Yeah. Like, you know, some people said, like, you know, normally he hits the target, the gun barrel, the blood goes down. This time the target hits him and he dissolves. Mm -hmm. it's like, I yeah. don't know if it was even intended that way. So I even heard a guy say, you know, there was actually a tampon in, in this movie. And that's that's why there was no <laughs> there, there, there were people that, that went that route. But, um, yeah, but... Like I said, I was pretty excited about it because I was just hyped to be in a the theater again and hyped to, to to hear the music pop on. And on a big screen, it always makes more of an impression to see Bond come on finally after all those years. So I wasn't I wasn't hating on it too much, but I did feel like, huh, that wasn't a traditional thing. But oh well, let's get on with it. Then we move into the actual pre-title sequence. Um, yeah, and had, there were actually, you know, you know how we were predicting in our forecasting series that I, I said, like, I think the Italy scene is going to be the pre-title sequence, but it could also, I also see people talk about the flashback scene, uh, if it's going to be a flashback, and mm -hmm. what turns out they use both as the pre-title sequence. Yeah, it I, seemed like at one point, like, we were going back and forth, which one was would be the pre, uh, pre-titles, yeah. like the, the snow or the, like the car chase, both. They crammed yeah. in both, and it ends up being be the longest pre-titles. And this this was near a half an hour, I think. This this was because um, I think the world is enough had the longest one. Because this this well, totally uh, yeah longer. Because I looked up the times, so yeah. the world the world is not enough pre-titles was about fourteen minutes. Yeah. No time to die's pre-titles was twenty minutes. 20 oh, minutes. it felt longer, but twenty, yeah. Just twenty minutes, yeah. Yeah, let's get let's get into that first. The um, the snow scene. I remember in our predictions that I told you like Madeline talks in the train, Inspector, about a man once came to our house, and I was like, I guess that's gonna be Safin. Mm -hmm. That whole thing was there, and I I did like 
this whole sequence in the snow. I felt this was really different. Immediately, it felt like we're not watching Sam Mendes doing Blonde anymore. This is different. And then the, the part where Safin all of a sudden is at the window with like the mask on, that right. was almost like horror movie, horror movie yeah. stuff. Like you were like, oh, this is this is different. Oh wow, this is this is kind of creepy. Um, what did you think of that? Um, yeah, I mean, I I don't really have any complaints with the uh, pre titles. I thought um, we, we kind of uh, because it was the most significant. Really, the only significant thing with Madeline, Inspector, to yeah. me, yeah. was her little story. And so yeah. they used that as, like, the jumping-off point for her in, in this movie. So it wasn't a um, it wasn't a surprise that they went there. Um, but I, I thought, yeah, it, it was kind of like a um, like a home invasion horror kind of thing. Yeah. I, I, I did like how they, they tried to set it into a time period. With the little girl playing with like one of those uh was like a tamagotchi like the little, little 90s yeah, toy like, like it's the, 90s uh, yeah 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 but like like some like it was well put together like you see the shot uh under the sink and then like you see it later it pull back and you see the gun is gone so you know like okay now the little girl's got the gun and stuff but uh one of the things like later and we, we could get to it we knew that we pretty much knew that was going to be malik under the mask yeah. It's yeah. just strange to me because, um, and I think you, I think you you were really um, pointing this out during one of our videos. The, the, those two are not that far apart in age; like they're only five years yeah. apart. Yeah. So like, like you know, if her being. They're gonna do a flashback as Madeline as a child. How is it gonna match up? Yeah. And they did do that. Like I. It, 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 it's, it's strange. It is weird. Like it doesn't seem like they aged Malik at all like it's from no like no. that past to like you know the present day uh i i don't maybe have it's the, his the skin, birth like years his, of yeah. madeline and i mean of leia Sedu and Remy malik but i imagined they're pretty close yeah i think it was like they're they're only four or five years apart in actual exactly. age right. yeah i think he's 40 she's about 36 it is, but maybe it is like, believable like, enough though for the for the story but yeah it's fine like he, he's got his messed up skin so i guess that kind of uh can cover up like yeah, his, he's actually aging. But I did come up with a question during the cinema already because we see Madeline's mom being like an alcoholic on the couch and she doesn't even care, like, like a strange man with a mask is standing in her living room. But I was thinking like if this is Madeline's mom, which by the way got murdered pretty brutally, mm -hmm. uh, who was the, the wife that Mr. White was sitting in a theater with in, in Quantum of Solace? Oh, I thought that was just like it was just like a rant. I I didn't I never thought it was his like wife. It was just oh, like okay. you know just somebody like he was sitting next to, uh, probably Actually, like like a random person who's going to see that opera. To me, it always seemed like that was his wife at that point. I I, I believe I thought it was at the time as well. Like oh, what do you know? He has a wife, you know. That, um, at the time, obviously it doesn't link to to anyone. Um, no, yeah, but, I think that was just like a. Just a random specter gathering. She might have been just like an innocent like concert goer. I guess so. He makes yeah. like a random comment to her. Oh. I bet the, the the writers never thought about the, that the woman they had seated uh, oh, next to. Uh... The writers they didn't think about a lot of stuff. I don't think. No. <laughs> Overall, this this was a good uh, very in pre-title sequence. I think. This but, little... like, but I have a question about that pre-titles. Yeah. Um, it, it, the little girl, like she sees her mom dead, like on the on on the couch. And yeah, it was kind of that was kind of a brutal kill. Even though like we didn't really see him actually shoot her, we we got the sense like that that was pretty hardcore. Like, that that was a pretty harsh way to start a Bond movie. I mean, yeah. we haven't seen something as brutal like that like since License to Kill, I guess, where yeah. you know, he rips out the heart and stuff. Yeah, 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 um, but. But like the little girl, she shoots the bad guy, and then like she starts dragging him out of the house, into the snow. I was like, where, where is she taking him? What, what is she doing? I didn't understand like what, what she was trying to get done. Like just take the bad guy out of the house or, I, put him I, in the to lake. To me, it seemed like yeah, exactly. Like she was going to try and dispose the the body because she she I guess she realized she committed a crime, so to speak. Oh. She needed to dispose this uh, this. 
then it turns out, of course, in another moment, which unfortunately we already saw in, in the, the last trailer, but the yeah. moment where he goes, <gasps> you know, he, mm-hmm. he comes back to his breath and, uh, and Madeline doesn't, didn't bring the gun this time and uh, she's in trouble. Mm-hmm. Uh, another good moment, I think, is this whole thing where she ends up under the, the ice in the lake. Yeah. Um, yeah, I like you said, it, this this wasn't. And then you know, she start he starts shooting at her uh, from under the ice. Um, which which uh, falling into the ice scene did you uh, like better? Because mm-hmm. immediately when I saw this, I was like, all right, they, this is similar to Skyfall. Yeah. Uh, when he fell into the ice. Oh, I thought you were gonna mention Dying of the Day, maybe. Where? <laughs> oh awesome. yeah, yeah, they ripped that movie off, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even think about that connection. I, I kind of blocked yeah, that movie out, you know. Yeah, but that wasn't really. Uh, that was that was Bond swimming under the ice on purpose, you know, and, and that connected yeah, to yeah. Reservoir yeah. or something. But um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but uh, here it's like, you know, this, to me, like you said, no complaints. This was a really strong, different, fresh opening. I felt uh, and. and the- why? Why do you think he was ready? He was ready to kill the little girl before. What? What? What flipped the switch? He saved. To save her. Saving her. Yeah. He ends up saving. I don't know. Her. I don't yeah. know. And that's another. And that's another thing we'll discuss later, I guess. Yeah. When we get to Saffin, but you know. His motivation. I, I was confused whether or not this was the big secret, or that she got saved by him. Yeah. That, that, I don't know what the big secret was. But we'll get back to <laughs> we'll get back to that later. But uh, I uh, I did uh, like the transition where you see her on the water and then she comes above water as an adult in Jamaica and obviously it's obvious to us we're now at the at the time shortly after Spectre ended I guess you know uh, she's just having a good time in Jamaica with Bond. It, it didn't have a. Um... 20 years later, 30 years later thing, did it? No, but they did that... do that after the pre-titles. Yeah, it was, it was, that was the five years later. So we don't know how much uh, time went. Yeah. But, uh, yes. yeah, and then this the first shot, Bond comes on. You know, he's, he's, uh, you see Craig again, all muscular, looking at her, beautiful shot. Mm-hmm. Um, all of that stuff, again, really good. And then shortly after, I think, we, we get the... We get the moment where um, they're in the car together, and she uh-huh. goes, uh, uh, "We're in no hur- there's no hurry, you see." And it's like, "Oh, is he gonna say it? We have all the time in the world." Like, huh? Mm-hmm. That's pretty good. And the it hasn't music. seen uh, Majesties yet, so she didn't get that connection. But I was like, "Oh, this is yeah, this is." Uh, I, I I like that moment. I was curious about that because, um, yeah, you hear the Majesties, uh, you know, all the time in the world. Louis Armstrong, come on. Yeah. And like we know what it is, we, yeah. we know like uh, the meaning behind all this, and like you know the homage they're doing and everything. But I wonder if like yeah. all this stuff, uh, if it if it affected like people who don't know Majesties and like that line yeah. all the time in the world, does that like have any more? Is it working on them the way that I think they're intending it to? Uh, outside, just not Bond fans who know it, but like just casual moviegoers. Well, Lyra didn't didn't see any significance to it, of course. Um, yeah. We're about to do the the Majesties one next, but she uh, she didn't she didn't think anything of it. So that's the, the reference I have. But as did a you, fan, I could appreciate it. Yeah. Did you did you like all those references and like the constant yeah. use of the? Well, the constant the, there was a lot of Majesties in here, wasn't there? But I I fe- I feel. Yeah, you know, I was just so happy to be in the cinema again and watch a Bond movie in the first place that I, I could let it sink in. And I guess you know, it's also the music combined with the beautiful cinematography as they drive into uh, a Madeira of uh, Matera of uh, Italy and you see them come up to this this spot. The music of of Majesty. So I'm like, wow, yeah, I'm actually watching a new Bond movie. This is, to me, it was all pretty impressive actually. I, I wasn't annoyed by it at all. I, I liked the first use of it and like the the shot of them driving by you know the ocean it it really harkens back to that and like you yeah. hear the music 
But then yeah. after that, I think they start going back to that well too much. Like all of a sudden, like they're using the line from Majesties, and I, they start utilizing that history too much. I think, uh, and just I was hoping like that was all Majesties all the time in the world. Why don't you come up with your own like new thing? Bring something new to the table, a new line, a new theme, or something. But uh, I, I guess it, it was neat to see like Majesties get like a shout out because you know it was kind of the the bastard child in the in the series for the longest time but yeah yeah the, like yeah. The, all the time in the world thing it started and then like the closing credits use the song again i was like oh man like they're really like you know diving into this uh, this, uh well yeah 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 i think there's there's always a fine line between if you call back something to falling into parody or doing it right and here i felt like yeah this to me this was subtle enough where you know the casual fans won't know and oh yeah oh, i that... guess one fans can appreciate it and as, as long as it's good because it looked good the music was good the callback is nice you know like i said i if they do it all the time you know that that would have annoyed me but yeah no i i uh, i was on board with it Maybe it's just me then. I was getting yeah. a little, but like I always have a problem with like them, you know, like the DB5, like pulling yeah. that out again. Um, well, speaking of the the DB5, yeah, the, we'll get into which this. Which was heavily uh, present in the this pre-title sequence later on. I do feel this was one of the best Bond movies to show the DB5. One of the best action scenes to ever see it in, I think. Mm-hmm. Uh, which pops up a little bit later because there's a lot of stuff before we get to that but yeah uh, what about we, we we see them arrive in the little town and yeah. we see them laying in bed and it's the the only sex that we see in this james bond film what do you think yeah i was kind of expecting that you know to <laughs> Being all of Rich is writing this, there's not going to be a lot of sex in this. We well, that was but, like one of our predictions: no sex. There was going to be barely yeah. any sex, and yeah, it was just. Well, we I guess this. we were pretty I, spot on. I guess, like in a way, like are we watching like his daughter's conception in that moment? I guess you, you could, <laughs> you, yeah. It kind of works so. out that way, right? I mean, yeah, no. I, maybe Madeline's secret was that she didn't use any birth control. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that was kind of expected. I figured no sex, and we we saw that little moment, them playing in bed. So yeah, uh, but I was on board with with a lot of this. Um, then there comes the moment where you know it's obvious Madeline needs to tell him a secret, but she also wants to know the secrets about Vesper, and and he has to forgive her. So he goes to her tomb, uh, which I felt was one of the the best moments in the film actually because to me that moment where he's standing in front of her grave pretty much mm-hmm. her tomb and you see her picture and we get the vesper music uh, from casino royale brought back to me it brought back so much because it's been what was it like 16 years 15 years 15 years since casino royale. yeah and and the, to hear him say just simple words like "I miss you." To me, that was that was I felt that more than the whole ending. That was like, oh wow, he does miss you. Yeah. Because like, oh. yeah. you know, Inspector, he throws away the tape uh, for her interrogation. Oh yeah, yeah, the VHS tape. Oh yeah, Vesper, forget about her. And Quantum is. I think this was something more heartfelt than the entirety of Quantum of Solace. This was a moment that Quantum of Solace needed to be. I think to see him in this position because he did find his solace which was supposed to be the whole point of quantum but they never yeah. reached this yeah, this so, intensity like so, they did here like like one line i miss you very oh. powerful to me yeah uh, so th- i felt that was more heartfelt than the entirety of quantum of solace and and pretty much the ending because i don't know about you but i i felt that like oh wow Madeline says to him, uh, you got to forgive Vesper. It was sort of like reminding me of like what it was almost like quantum, the quantum beats again, because like math is saying to him, forgive her, forgive yourself. Yeah. It doesn't seem like 
as much as they said, like, oh, he found his solace and everything, I, I guess he really didn't. He didn't really find any solace at the end of that movie. He's still you carrying know, this stuff around. We, what did he find in Quantum? You know, that Quantum was just a confusing mess, even even in yeah. the being James Bond documentary, they kind of confessed, like, yeah, you know, Quantum uh, wasn't, you know, he was the writer strike. Even they, they were, they were, they're kind of like, you know, Quantum was regrettable and. Oh. They're, yeah, they're I still not, haven't seen not, that doc yet. Yeah, yeah they still... are being more honest about it now in retrospect. Like, yeah, it wasn't what it was supposed to be. Um, which which is fair, by the way. The writer strike did have a huge impact on that. I mean, there were parts where Craig and Forster had to do the, a lot of the writing on, yeah. while filming it. You know yeah. about all this. They, yeah, they were making it up as they filmed. Yeah. But this whole, like you said, the forgiving of Vesper, the, the, the moment where he kind of tries to find his solace, all of this was stuff which really would have benefited if this was in Quantum, all of, the, all of this stuff. Did he? Did so at the end of Quantum of Solace, he never really found his solace. Not to this extent, I feel. It's like a, I need you back. I never left. And, you know, I, 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 I missed you. I, I miss you. Yeah, that yeah. that packs more of a wallop than him just chucking her necklace off to the side. Right. I, I guess it also works because it's been so long, and to see him still. Uh, to see Vesper still looming over him after 15 years and to, to hear him finally say, I miss you, that, you know, that, that connection they have, it just, it's so much more than what Bond and Madeline, so much more believable. It, it, it really is. I, I, I said that, I think I, I mistakenly attributed it to you, maybe, but that, that him standing at that grave and, like, burning, like, you know, forgive me, that has more of an emotional punch to me than anything that him and Madeline uh, go through in this movie. Like it, it, any kind of connection that supposedly they have. Yeah. Um, you know, it's funny. Even my girlfriend, I said, "What did you think of Bond and Madeline?" And she said, um, "It doesn't seem like they have any kind of um, like joy." In their relationship, there's no playfulness. Yeah. There's not. There's yeah. no real connection. It, it's been like that since she got introduced to Spectre to, to me. I don't. I don't see her as a worthwhile successor to Vesper yeah. you know, and, in any and way. The, and and it's the same in in Spectre. There's this moment where Bond is getting tortured in the chair. The drill comes into his oh, head. Oh yeah, yeah. And, and you know, she, she's quickly going to find out whether or not she he forgot about her and then he's like i would recognize you anywhere like he's deeply in love with this woman i'm like where did the you know how did this start <laughs> uh, you yeah. know what's the significant and now i do have to do, do have to say and we'll get into madeline more in the later episode she was yeah. a lot more fleshed out and she had some really good acting in this a lot better than specter i feel I, I was on board with her a lot more. I still don't really buy the, the chemistry as much as Bond and Vesper had, but still, yeah, she was better in this. I feel. I, I would, I would remember you ever anywhere. Like I don't even need, need a drill in my head to forget about this chick. Like when she, <laughs> when, when she was off screen, I have to think about it. But like I think when she was off screen and not involved in any of the. Uh, any of the, the the goings on, but that's that's the parts of No Time to Die I enjoyed the most, when she wasn't yeah. even involved in any of it. Yeah. Um, uh, but you know, we'll get to her later. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, out of nowhere, Vesper's tomb explodes. Mm -hmm. That caught me off guard. That caught me by a huge surprise, and and Leroy as well. He grabbed my leg like she was. She didn't expect this mm -hmm. moment either. Um, I was very happy they did not show any of this in the trailer, actually, to, to, to have this be a genuine surprise, because I was not expecting Vesper that, to pop um, up like that in the first place, and and this whole moment, because there was so much that was spoiled to, to us. Yeah. This, yeah. To me, this it, was uh, this was pretty uh, a big surprise. I mean, in a way, like, I'd be... It's shocking that he could survive that blast. Like he yeah. was standing right there. <laughs> yeah. But it, yeah, it's okay. It, that that's okay. Um, like yeah, you, 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 see you that have the numbed out music, like you know, 
that, that Zimmer uses where you can't hear anything for a moment. Yeah, that ringing, that like yeah. Private Ryan or something. That yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, exactly. Shell shocked. Um, but uh, I was yeah, happy to see it. it. It made an impact on me. The, the explosion wasn't in. I was totally in this movie by this point. By the way, I loved every bit of the so up to this point, and all the bits coming as well, um, where he. You know, there's the scene coming up, which we did already see, where the Maserati drives the Bond on the big stone bridge. Yeah, that that was one of the things that, like, the trailers, it's a good scene, like, a good action scene with the DB5 and all the yep. chase and everything. Yep, and the bike. But, but the trailers, like, after all these trailers and stuff, yeah. it was sort of, and, the, like, I think they showed the whole extended clip yeah. of them, like, you know, being surrounded and stuff. That, you that, could... This, you, you can kind of, like I could have I could have pieced it together by like yeah. what I saw like you know from all those trailers. It, I it's agree. Kind of it, a shame. It, it really is because because Lyra didn't see any of the trailers. I don't know about your girlfriend while you were watching it, but I was kind of envious like to her that part where the car comes up. She was like, <gasps> then he jumps up. She she was so totally surprised. Same with the the bike jump. Yeah, he was like, oh, "Oh, wow! What a what a stunt!" And I was like, "I've seen this a million times." You know, right, uh, right. to me that it's a shame because you want it to be like her yeah. reaction. But um, yeah, I don't. I, I it was a, it was a good action scene. Good action scene. I I, I like the DB5. I like um, seeing it all, um, everything getting pulled out. You know, all, all the little bombs coming out of the the uh, the back, the smoke yeah. screen. But um, I hope they retire it. I hope they they're done with the DB5. And like they, they I, I've, I've said it, it a lot. Yeah, yeah. I, I've said it. I, I've complained to you enough about it, but and I don't want to go on about it. But they, I think they pulled they they pulled it out way too much. It's become a nostalgic crutch. I know they use it for promotion, but it's yeah. enough. Like I, I I didn't even let myself start questioning and say why if he's retired why does he have this gadget full car. He, yeah. He's not on duty anymore. It should just be the regular car for that. Like maybe he won in casino, but it's still yeah. the guy. I, just, I didn't even think about it. I was like, all right, he's going to have guns in it and everything. Okay. Fine. Yeah. Yeah. But, it, uh, I agree, but I didn't question it either. It doesn't make sense in the, you know, if, especially in this continuity of late and era. It doesn't yeah. make sense. But, but I did like how when that sequence started because i didn't watch that like they released the whole clip of him shooting at the the car and like her yeah. panicked inside and everything but i did like that little um detail of like the bells ringing sort of like yeah. drowning out like all the gunfire that's happening in this little town <laughs> yeah almost like all this this mayhem that's happening yeah, I, the I, I, to, to come back to that moment where he's kind of, he's kind of waiting in the car exactly like you said to ready to be killed and Madeline as well and I was like come on James come on and he's like all numbed out I that's another shame that they showed that in the final trailer that was mm -hmm. that was, was supposed to be fresh again we did know that was coming where he eventually goes okay and then does the donut because I was totally waiting for the donut to happen again I was yeah. envious because Lyrid had no idea like what was come what was coming he was like do something, you know. She had no idea the guns were about to come out. So to me, that that's almost better to not see a lot of the trailers because it does spoil so much. I do like the moment where he's like, because he's not necessarily numbed out because he's afraid he can't win, but he's just numbed out because his will to to survive is gone for a yeah. little bit because he's just he's in she, shock that Madeline yeah, might be. She betrayed him. Yeah. Her, yeah. What's the point anymore? What's yeah. the point? Well, she did this bitch betrayed me. Why? Why? Why should I fight? And then there's this one moment of doubt. Like maybe I should just try and see what happens. And the Gatling guns, I do like that. Then yeah, you know that's a, a, a cool addition. At least that's not a, a call. I mean, it, it, it was like different. That that might have been like one of the reasons why they use that so much in the trailers was because one, it was the DB5. Everybody knows, oh, James Bond and his car. And it's so early in the movie, they didn't want to give away uh, more of the stuff, the the, the secret stuff, in the yeah. in the trailers from later in the movie. So like, it's not as important as the stuff towards the end. So we'll just use all this to promote the yeah. film, put it in the trailer, show off the clips, 
that 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 was one of the things I had. Uh, one of the problems I had with the movie was that uh, I, I think most of the the best action is towards the front end of it, with the um, yeah, I guess the, so. With the DB five and like the other stuff that uh, we could talk about down the road, but. Um, Which, by the way, is similar to the other movie that had the longest pre-title sequence, The World Is Not Enough. Most of the yeah. good action is in the beginning. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, um, um, but yeah, it's it was a it was a cool opening. It was a yeah. cool opening. And and, and yeah. I like that bit where he actually drops her off at the train near the end of the the pre-titles. It's just like it's it's another moment where. I was already thinking, all right, Madeline's been framed. There's no way she's all of a sudden the, the bad guy now. I didn't buy it for a second. Like, yeah, no, no. She, um, she's going to be secretly working for Spectre. She, she didn't really betray him. But it was pretty powerful again. Bonds just says goodbye to her. He doesn't kill her. He, doesn't, he just doesn't want anything to do with her anymore. He doesn't yeah. want to deal with Spectre. And he's just like, you're gone. It's kind of it's, it's weird. It's it is kind of weird, like how he's so ready to believe that she's in on this and that like she's not being framed. He he was really he fell for their trick a little too easy. Yeah, he didn't like question. I agree. Anything. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, yeah. Which Good by action. the way, did, I was surprised. Uh, did did, did, you, did you, were you surprised that that Blofeld all of a sudden was on the phone there? Um, that I I. I I, I thought about that later. I was like, they give him phone privileges in prison? Or, like, how's he calling? How did he do that? <laughs> yeah. Well done, Madeline. Ah, oh, yes, Madeline. Well done. He, he does it like, you, you're going to make Spectre proud or something. Yeah. something. And then I like, like, how he sees her phone and, like, the the Spectre logo comes up. Yeah. Like, you know, that's, that's the ID. It's, it's totally a secret organization, but as soon as they call you, you know, they make sure yeah. the logo pops up. Yeah, yeah. That's their uh, little uh, contact uh, picture. Yeah. <laughs> I guess. But, uh, that's yeah. okay. That's okay. Um, yeah, no. But overall, like I said, um, really powerful pre-title sequence. And I always say with the pre-title sequence in Bond movies, it needs to pump you up and, you know, whet your appetite to see, uh, to get you ready for the movie. And yeah. I totally was on board uh, up yeah. until this point. It did. It, it, it did a good job. It did a good yeah. job. Which um, I guess this is going to be interesting to hear from me. It moves us into the title sequence, and you, unlike seeing all the trailers and stuff, you mm. managed to never hear the Billie Eilish song up until I, the cinema. Because I, I heard it, like, it? A, like more than a year ago. I heard it so many times. So to I, you, what was it, it like was... to hear that song for the first time in theaters? Um, you're going to be disappointed. Uh, I was like. Yeah, it was okay. It is an okay song. Yeah, it's I, that's a, it's what okay. I told you. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was it was good. It didn't like blow me away or anything. Um, it was it's, it's it was better than Sam Smith. Like, I, oh, that's what I oh, told you. oh, yeah, De yeah, 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 definitely. Uh, it, yeah. It, it was definitely better than that. Um, it's not my favorite in like the Craig. Like, you know, it's not like uh, you know my name or uh, Skyfall. Um, yeah. But I liked it better than what was the Quantum one. Uh, Another way to die. Another way to die. Um, yeah, it was it was fine. I mean, it, will it be on constant rotation for me? Like, probably not. But um, no, me neither. But it's it's. I think the lyrics are pretty powerful, and it ties yeah. in well with the movie. Like, you know, I've fallen for a lie, and, and you know, that's uh, uh, not you, the person that that uh, that he, that yeah. he bought and like, all that uh, stuff. Are you death or paradise or yeah, something like that? Um, Who me once? Me twice. Yeah, that's a. Um, yeah, it was good. I, I don't think it, it it it's made me like a Billie Eilish fan or anything. No, no, me either. But you know, I remember because because I I did actually listen to it on the first release that I was happily surprised back then, and I was like, oh, this is a lot better than what I was thinking she would put out. So yeah, no, I I still like it today. Um, it wouldn't be in my top ten either, but I really hope that they go back to less solemn bond uh, a less solemn bond song and give us something 
like you know, uh, View to a Kill and Living Daylights and something like oh, you know I, I can get my toe tapping and like get a little bit excited about like the yeah. movie. It, it was another. Do you ever think that you know a bomb movie is going to start again, where you, you see like female body, zipper opening, boobs oh. popping out with 007. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, gone are uh, those days. <laughs> I wish. Yeah, we're not going to see any like topless chicks wearing neon ribbons anymore. But what do you think of the the title sequence itself? Like, was uh, it Kleinman again who did this? Oh yeah, I thought it was. Uh, again, it was like it was fine. Uh, um, some of the stuff, I, I it didn't register. I guess it was like a lot of foreshadowing being done because I I remember seeing. Um, a statue holding a trident. Oh yeah. And then, yeah. Like then it clicked to me. It's like, oh, that was like his little, his little sign, his call sign or whatever on the computer, like on the island at the end. The James uh, Bond. He says he's this trident. He's the blue trident. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah I didn't think of that because I think that was also a reference to Majesties. I, think I, I know, the, um, the hourglass. As soon as I saw the, like, the hourglass. But I think, isn't the trident in there as well in Majesty's? Or uh, I'm not confusing it. But I'm at least sure. the hourglass, that's a big reference as well. Yeah. Um, and then they do all the DNA with the, the guns and stuff. The DNA. I didn't really get, because you see the DB5 go, like, land underwater. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's the thing. Uh, you know, I wish yeah. I could just pop it up now and watch it again. Lots of, again, they showed Vesper, Madeline, Bond uh, in the um, in the images, pictures of Madeline. Yeah. I think yeah, Blofeld was there. Yeah, Blofeld that, again. Um, they didn't do the same thing as Spectre, where they kept showing like other villains, like oh they, yeah, Spectre, Spectre even had like Silva in there for uh, no real reason. Uh, yeah, the exploding masks. Oh yeah. But yeah, no. The, to to me, um, yeah, I, I was enjoying it up until this point. Good, good, good pre-title sequence, fun titles. Um, yeah, it was fine. Powerful was, opening. Yeah. yeah. So overall, um, pretty was, pretty solid start. I, I I was kind of surprised because like we kept on saying like our, our predictions. Oh, they're gonna ambush. Uh, Spectre is gonna ambush Bond and Madeline in the DB5, which is kind of what they did. Yeah, but I didn't anticipate them trying to frame Madeline like being in on it and turning Bond against her. No, that was like an element. I was like, okay, kind of because I did I did see I wasn't necessarily thinking it would go like this, but there was the moment in the trailer. Why would I betray you? You know, we all. Oh yeah, secret. well. And also the the fact that in the trailer you see that he sees her again in the mi6 building and you can see like he hasn't seen her in a long time which is why i predicted they would do a time skip so i did know something is about to go wrong here but i wasn't expecting blowfeld to just call her like hey you know madeline you know, good job and good job madeline oh, yes. you're making specter proud babe yes yeah <laughs> uh but yeah um up to that point yeah uh, everything was Everything's good. Everything. All the start. Yeah. I was like, okay, I'm I'm ready for I'm ready to see what they got going uh, for this one. 